Welcome to FOMO Consulting for your daily AMC stock analysis on Friday, May 14th. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the verge of becoming very wealthy. We are right on the cusp of causing the squeeze. We are right on the cusp of a life-changing event. And as always, the apes are winning, the diamond hands are winning, and most importantly, the retail investor is winning. So if you find this video informative and entertaining, please like, share, comment, and certainly subscribe. I would certainly appreciate your support. Let's get into the video. So first, I want to thank everyone who has liked, shared, certainly commented, and most importantly, subscribed. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's start with a quote. 90% of all millionaires become so through owning real estate from Andrew Carnegie. And we own AMC. We own a lot of movie theaters, ladies and gentlemen. Really great news over the last couple of days. The 43 million share at the market equity offering is now come and gone. Certainly was a catalyst yesterday carried over into today, that piece of negative FUD is now gone. A piece of great news came out today. B. Riley raises the price target from $13 to $16. If you recall, B. Riley raised their price target probably a month and a half ago from $7 to $13, causing a nice little bit of excitement. Uh, $16, no doubt. Uh, is a fair valuation at this time, if not higher. But the fact that uh, analysts are starting to become more bullish and more realistic is a great sign for us. So let's look at the broader market today. Great day on the market. Uh, two days in a row we've had green. Certainly needed, uh, especially going into the weekend. Uh, all three major indices come up very uh, green, very substantially. Dow Jones up 30, uh, 360 points, NASDAQ up 304, and S&P up 61. Fantastic. Tech even had a good day for once. So AMC did very well today. I know everyone is probably a little disappointed. We didn't keep carrying the momentum over 14, 15, or whatever, but we actually needed to kind of cool off after yesterday, consolidate. Uh, certainly, there were a lot of, uh, you know, profit taking going on, some paper hands, uh, and these shorts certainly took advantage of that downward selling pressure. Uh, they cleared out some positions, recycling their short positions, no doubt. So we closed at twelve dollars and ninety eight cents. Uh, Thirteen dollars is always better, right? But twelve dollars and ninety eight cent, and finishing green up twenty one cents or one point six four percent was absolutely huge after such a uh, big green day yesterday. Actually, my expectation uh, was actually to have a slightly red day due to all the profit taking, um, but to follow up with a second green day, albeit uh, narrowly, was actually a huge show of strength. So let's look at a bigger picture where we've been over the last uh, 10 days or so. As you can see, we have climbed a very steep hill over the last week after coming past earnings. We took eight red days in a row. We have now had, what, four or five straight, uh, maybe six green days in a row. Uh, we certainly, as you can see, uh, yesterday was a big, big push. We actually needed to correct just a bit. Uh, kind of cool off a bit, as you can see by the yellow arrows, but overall a huge show of strength, not only today, but this week. So here is a different perspective. This is actually the weekly candles. Uh, I've never shown you this perspective. Each candle represents one week. As you can see, we are trending up. We continue to trend up very beautifully. Uh, when we were in mid-March and we shot up to $14.54, we actually had to kind of cool off and come back down towards that red trend line, which is for illustration purposes. Additionally, if you look at the yellow arrows at the bottom at the MACD, 
before the baby squeeze, we had a very abrupt upward move. We touched the signal line and bounced, and we've continued a lot of bullish momentum going forward. Uh, just last week, we actually touched that signal line or got very close to, and now we have bounced, continuing our bullish upward trend. So it's a very uh, different look on the weekly. So in the bigger picture, from a daily chart perspective, we are clearly in a bullish direction regarding the simple moving average. The MACD has completed its uh, bullish crossover. We need to ensure a few green candles next week uh, to continue that upward trajectory. Uh, and the RSI is right at the overbought, but it is cooled off. And I believe that is a good thing going into next week. I've shown this before. AMC is clearly... Uh, strengthening as a company, uh, there's no doubt about that. The diamond triangle will not allow the shorts to escape. The regulatory filings are uh, coming out daily, and we hold the floor. There is no escape but to squeeze. So there is a belief in some circles about candle magic. And in that belief, the green candle stands for money, fertility, luck, abundance, health, and success. And on Fridays, based on the planetary uh, selection, the green candle is for Fridays. I think that's appropriate, and I'll certainly take all the green candles you can spare. So let's look at what they were up to today. So this was at market open. You can see the return shares and borrowed shares at the top. They did not return any shares at the open. They borrowed 250,000. The cost to borrow average came down substantially because they are resetting their positions due to the rising prices. Let's look around mid morning. They returned 2.43 million. They borrowed 1.15. Borrow change of 1.28 again cost to borrow average uh, substantially down from earlier this week mid uh, mid afternoon they returned 6.1 million shares they borrowed 1.54 and by the close of uh, trading they returned nearly 8 million shares but borrowed two and a half million which gave them a return share of 5.5 million. They did the exact same thing last Friday. They carried around 5 million shares into the uh, weekend. This is a rinse and repeat cycle. They keep kicking the can down the road and I will show you this on the charts. So let's look at the short data. So the short interest is about the same. The short interest of free float came down just a little bit, and that is a good thing, and I'll show you why. Percent of free float on loan came down about four points. It, that is a good thing, and I'll show you why. Shares on loan is about the same, albeit they returned on this uh, data indicator about two million shares. Days to cover came down just a hair, uh, 0.10 to 1.64. Cost to borrow came down just a hair to 20.63. Utilization, because there are no shares, at 100%. Total volume today was 206 million. A little short of yesterday, but historically Fridays have always been lighter due to options expiring and what have you. Institutional ownership has gone up substantially by about seven over the last couple of days. Uh, smart money is piling in yet again. According to Fintel, they have zero short shares. Their short borrow fee, apparently the apes broke it. But overall, the trend data is still very, very much in our favor. So I've shown this before, but I want to show you a different viewpoint. So the red line you see, the trend line I've illustrated, that is around the $14 level. The gray volume bars you see, and start at the left, look around the time of the baby squeeze. 
you can see where they clearly had more than enough shares to borrow uh, to short it right back down. If you look at the, the density, the thickness, and the volume. When we got to $14.54 in March, you can see where they had more than enough firepower to borrow those shares. Uh, they exited their positions, as you can see by the trend lines, uh, for all the short interest. They borrowed the shares, shorted it right back down. Plenty of ammo. If you look when we spiked about a week or so, uh, two weeks ago, to $12.20, you can see had plenty of uh, borrowed shares, right? If you look today, the yellow trend line I've drawn at the bottom, the far right, that is as high as they could get it. That is the most shares they could borrow. That is very, very weak. It shows they are completely running out of ammunition to hold this back. That's why they keep recycling these 5 million shares over and over again. If we keep the pressure up at the $14 level, no doubt we will break the dam. So I'll show you another perspective. Again, $14 level. You can see where the volume kicked in when we were at $14.54. We got up to $12.20. They had a little bit less. Now they basically have nothing. If you just look at the gray bars in relationship to the price and the trend lines, they are clearly running out of ammunition. So let me illustrate this one other way. So let's start at the top and work our way down. The red trend line is the $14, $14.20 range. We've touched it now four times, uh, a couple times in March, and now a couple times over the last two days. You can clearly see that is a red line of demarcation. They do not want us to cross. To initiate the squeeze, we will have to cross it. There is no doubt in my mind. It is my opinion only. The red arrows, if you look at the left, when we were in the $14 range, if you look at the moving average, where that trend line meets the moving average, we were nearly at the top of our uh, bullish run at that time. They shorted us very heavily. They had plenty of short shares available and they shorted it right back down and we all know we spent about three weeks trading sideways in the non-dollar channel. Now if you look we have just now turned the corner. We are the moving average is just coming up. We have a long run to go assuming that we stay uh, in a positive direction. We have plenty of runway and we're already at the $14 level now twice in the last 24 hours. We clearly have the momentum advantage. We are starting at a higher level with more runway, and I clearly believe we are going to break that line. We're going to break the red wall. So I showed this yesterday, but for the new viewers, so this is AMC back in early or excuse me, late January. This was pre-market, right before the opening bell. Most people recognize AMC went to $20.36. That was recognized intraday. We actually went to $25.80 uh, pre-market. So the lesson to this is do not sleep late. <laughs> so again, this is only 28th of January. We went to $23 at a little after 6 a.m. The moral to this story, don't sleep late. So again, this is where we were recognized at $20.36, literally at the time of the opening bell on the day of the 27th, and we fell off very sharply from there. However, we recovered to $19.65 by market close. So Again, this is an illustration. If you look pre-market on a bigger picture, this is the uh, hourly chart. $25.80 pre-market. You can see where we ran up, ran down. Intraday, we were never as high as we were pre-market and, uh, pre and after hours. So again, the moral to the story is 
stay very vigilant keep your eye on the prize you never know when it could pop because we do specifically have a history of running after hours and pre-market so what i want to show you is gme gme same time frame late january did the exact same thing recognized obviously around what 483 dollars right but pre-market they actually ran up to 514 dollars as a high but again you can see the volatility pre-market and after hours so again do not let your guard down even though the trading day is done so this is tesla so tesla alternatively to gme and amc uh, went through a essentially a long squeeze that took one year to play out uh, low point of around $65 ran up to $900. It was a year in the making, but it was an extremely heavily shorted stock uh, without a doubt. And you can certainly see how the stock uh, reacted over that period of time. I'm not so sure at this point uh, we possibly might be in for a bit of a longer squeeze uh, with all the manipulation. We may not get a violent uptick. We actually might get a more sustained run. And quite frankly, that might be a great scenario for us to allow more people to uh, take part. We'll get into that more over the weekend. So this is Tesla. Uh, just a quick look. Prior to the beginning of their squeeze, the short interest uh, was very high. The shares on loan were very high. And as I've discussed before, the price ran up to meet those trend lines. Uh, they exited their positions and the rest is history. They ran up to $900. Uh, we need to force the very same thing. So let's look at what Monday, Tuesday might look like. Uh, by closing at $12.98, we put approximately 93,000 calls in the money. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, when we have large amounts of uh, calls in the money, we have a history of having very green days. So I'm very enthusiastic going into Monday, and I think we're going to get our week started off with a big green bang. So big money trades, not an awful lot, thousand contracts, uh, people trying to kind of hedge out, grab a little extra money uh, for the weekend, I guess. But uh, overall, Nothing terribly substantial, but certainly everything on here is bullish. So let's look. We're back to a three to one uh, bullish sentiment on the uh, calls versus puts. I certainly am very excited going into next week. I think we're going to have a lot of uh, interest in that $13, $14, $15 range. That's going to only help uh, press our price action even higher. So I had a great week. You had a great week. Very, very green week. We all love it. And certainly after what we've been through over the last uh, couple of months, trading sideways at $9. But I am in this diamond hands until we squeeze. I am with you. Uh, we'll be in this together. So quick little uh, thing, and I'm not an affiliate. I'm not, don't get paid for advertising. But I know not everyone has hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. But one way that I actually fund my Weeble brokerage account is through Acorn. So some of you that uh, just need to save a little money, buy a few shares of AMC, whatever you can do to uh, get in on the run. Uh, Acorns is a good way to do it. The roundups, uh, they invest your money. You actually get uh, a return on that money far better than a savings account. So. Uh, I would look into it. I will put uh, a link in the description below so you can check it out. My bold prediction this week was between 11 and 12.50, and I am more than happy to accept the fact we closed at $12.98 very happily. Let's close with a quote. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles from the book The Art of War. I think we have been through a hundred battles. We know our enemy, we know our opponent, and we do not fear the results of these battles on a daily basis. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for, for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I 
sincerely appreciate your support uh, that you've shown thus far. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, comment, and certainly subscribe. It is, again, a newer channel, and I always appreciate all the support you can possibly provide. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.